today we will start our next topic, uh, the packet flow into ACI. So before we start uh, all the cases that how actually the traffic flows within the fabric, I would like to discuss uh, some basic topics that we uh, must know before we go into the details. So now let's uh, start with these topics. So the first one is that what is an endpoint? So an endpoint uh, are the is and is a device or host that is connected to our fabric. So in ACI, the endpoints uh, that can be represented by a MAC address or an IP address with slash thirty two uh, mask. So it means that uh, whenever a leaf switch, it uh, learns about the host or a device connected to it. Uh, it learns the IP address as a slash 32 mask, irrespective of the original uh, mask that is uh, hold by that particular host. Then uh, we do have the forwarding tables into ACI. There are a couple of forwarding tables in ACI. The first one is the endpoint table. So the endpoint table will contain all the information uh, related to the host, like the MAC address or the IP address, but with slash 32 mask. Then we have the routing, to routing table. The routing table uh, mainly contains the known uh, slash 32 routes, but there is some exception that uh, let's say we uh, create one subnet under the bridge domain, then that particular uh, subnet or SVI that will be injected by our ACI fabric into the routing table as a slash 32 route. And also uh, the layer three routes Let's say we have uh, some routes uh, that are outside of our network, which are slash 32 and uh, those routes are injected by the layer three out into the fabric, then there can be a chance that we do have the slash 32 routes. Otherwise in the routing table, we'll be having only known slash 32 routes. As of now, we did, did not uh, talk about the layer three out, but uh, if I talk about the layer three out quickly, so you can think of it like this. So let's say this is our leaf switch and it is connected to some router and this router is connected to the outside world. So now all the routes which are pre present in our fabric, they will be advertised to this particular router, right? And the routes from outside, it will inject into our fabric. So this is done via the layer three out. So you can understand layer three out as an external, external connection to the fabric. So this is about the routing table. Then we have the ARP table. Uh, so ARP table uh, exists in uh, ACI only for the layer three out. Because in the layer three out, uh, as we uh, discussed that if this is the router which is connected to the outside world. There can be tons of subnets, right? And there is no point in learning all those uh, subnets as slash 32 routes into the endpoint table, right? Against a single MAC, right? There will be some MAC address on this interface. So there is uh, no point in learning all those uh, tons of routes with slash 32 against a single MAC. So that is why uh, there is uh, the ARP concept is only for the layer three out. So we'll just learn the MAC address of the connected interface that will be put in, into the endpoint table. And then we'll learn the next top IP only. So we are not going to uh, learn all the outside external routes as the local endpoints into the endpoint table. So we'll discuss all uh, in details when we will discuss about the layer three out. So now uh, there is a small comparison between the legacy and ACI. So in ACI, if you can see here in the legacy, we have the routing information base table, right? Or the rib. In the rib, as we know that we do have all uh, type of routes. We have slash 32 routes and we have uh, known slash 32 routes as well. 
But in ACI, in the routing information base, we only have the slash, unknown slash 32 route, except these two exceptions. So if there is uh, a BD subnet, which is configured, so that subnet will be injected as a slash 32 route in the routing table, or if there are some external routes behind the layer three out, which are having slash 32 subnet. Otherwise, all the routes in the rib into ACI, they will be known slash 32. Then we have the uh, MAC, MAC information. In ACI, we do have the endpoint table. So the endpoint table will contain both the MAC address, as well as the IP address. ARP is only for layer three out into ACI. So earlier, as you know that in the MAC address table in legacy, we only have MAC information and here we have the IP and MAC. So these both information are now present into the endpoint table. There is no separate table for IP. So in ACI, we do have a single uh, endpoint table which contains all the MAC addresses and the slash 32 IP addresses, which are related to the hosts. Also, uh, here is a point that needs to be uh, noted. The forwarding decision will be based upon this rule. So if I have a leaf switch and if some traffic hits here on its port, so first of all, it will check the endpoint table. And then if it uh, does not found the information into the endpoint table, it will look into the routing table. So this is the forwarding uh, decision that a leaf switch will take. Now let's move forward to our next topic. So now let's talk about uh, these endpoints. So we have uh, two type of uh, endpoints. Basically we have uh, local endpoints and we have remote endpoints. So local endpoints are uh, the endpoints which are directly connected to our leaf switch. Okay, so these are the local endpoints. So for example, I have a leaf switch and on its port, let's say one by one, there is a server connected. So the IP address and MAC address of the server, it will be considered as the local endpoint for this particular leaf, okay? And let's say there is another leaf here, leaf two, and there is another server here. So when, let's say here we have this spine. So when this particular leaf switch will learn about this server, let's say it is server B. So it will learn it via the fabric, via this spine, right? So for this particular leaf, server B will be considered as a remote endpoint. Right. So as I mentioned here, so remote endpoints and local endpoints. So for the local endpoints also, we need to uh, take care of one point that when the traffic hits on the ports, front panel ports of a leaf switch, then it can learn the MAC address or IP address. So if the operation or the flow is layer two, or you can say that if the devices are communicating into the same subnet, then it will learn only the MAC address. And if it is a routed traffic, then leaf switch will learn the IP address only. Okay. If the communication is routed or an R packet, yeah, sorry, not only MAC uh, and IP, uh, it's, it will learn both in case of routed traffic or if it is an R packet, so it is going to learn both IP and MAC address information. For the remote endpoints, uh, as I mentioned that uh, the remote endpoints will be learned uh, via the tunnel interfaces. So tunnel interfaces are uh, nothing but the uh, logical interfaces that will be, uh, that will be created between your devices and they will be created using your TAP address or the VTAP address. We have already discussed about the VTAP address in our previous sections, right? So they will be remote endpoints. So now whenever a leaf switch uh, learns about the endpoint or the local endpoint, it is going to report to the spine. 
to update the database. So this spine uh, will get to know about the local endpoints which are residing uh, behind the leaf switches via the COOP or uh, the Council of Oracle Protocol. This is the protocol that is uh, responsible for this kind of information gathering. So this is a point that we can remember. And uh, the remote endpoints, they will not be reported to the spine switch. It doesn't mean that uh, like uh, this leaf switch here, it learns about this BMAC address or the remote endpoint. It is, it is not going to report this to the spine switch. So only local endpoints will be reported to the leaf switch, sorry, to the spine switch. So now we can see here when the endpoints are connected to the same leaf. So there will be local endpoints. For example, I'm on a leaf switch. If I do a show endpoint IP and the IP address of the endpoint that uh, this leaf switch learn. So you can see here if behind the MAC address and IP address, if it is written the alphabet L, it means this particular uh, endpoint is learned as a local endpoint, or it means that it is directly connected to this particular leaf switch. Now let's see what's next. So this we already seen that show endpoint IP so we have the MAC address, IP address, and if we have this alphabet L, it means that it is the local endpoint. We also have some locally significant or PI VLANs, which are called the uh, platform independent VLANs. So these are uh, automatically created and these are locally significant. So if you can see here, we have a VLAN 29. If I check show VLAN ID 29 extended, it will give us the more information like it is created against this particular EPG. So we'll discuss about these villains. Now, let's see some more output. I have a left switch. If I do a show endpoint Mac, and the MAC address, you can see here, we have some information related to this particular uh, endpoint. Now we can see here, instead of the capital letter L, we have a tunnel interface. So it means that this particular endpoint is learned via the fabric or via the spine, right? So it means that this is a remote endpoint. And also we can see here the locally significant or the PI VLAN. If you do a show VLAN ID extended, you can see that this particular uh, VLAN, it belongs to the bridge domain. And this is the uh, VXLAN ID, which is assigned to that particular bridge domain. So whenever you are creating a bridge domain, let's say I created a bridge domain BD1. So as soon as I create this particular BD, a VXLAN ID will be assigned to this, which will be uh, unique throughout your fabric. So let's say this particular BDI I have created on uh, leaf one. So if I create the same uh, bridge domain on let's say leaf two, then, so leaf cannot be connected to leaf. So it is a leaf two. So if I create a BD, if I create the same BD on another leaf, then the same VXLAN ID, will be assigned to that particular BD. Same is the case with the VRF. When you are creating a VRF, then as soon as you create the VRF, a VXLAN ID will be assigned to that particular VRF. So you can check the information of, of the locally significant VLANs like uh, this, show VLAN ID, then the VLAN uh, number and then extended. So this is one more command that I put here. If you see the tunnel interface, whenever you see the tunnel interface, it means that it is a remote endpoint.
okay now let's move to the next slide now i'm on leaf 141 sorry 140 if i do a show endpoint and then ip we can see here that this particular endpoint is learned via the tunnel interface it means that it is a remote endpoint now i want to check that which leaf is owning this particular endpoint so now what i can do is i can uh, run a command show interface tunnel pipe grab destination so now for this particular tunnel on leaf 140 i can I, I just find out that the tunnel destination ip is the this one 10232.60.200 this is the tap address or the vtap address behind which this particular endpoint is residing so now if i want to know uh, about that particular leaf using this particular tap address i can run this command aci diag fnv read pipe and then i can filter this particular ip or the tap address now you can see this particular tap address belonging to the uh, leaf id 145 it is in pod 1 and the name of this particular uh, leaf switch which is holding this particular tap address is leaf 145 this is the ip address its role is leaf state is active so this is how uh, we can find out various information using these uh, simple commands. So we can use uh, some more commands to find out different information. So if I uh, run this command, show system internal EPM endpoint IP and the IP of that particular endpoint. So it will give you uh, some different information like the BD we need that I discussed in our previous section, right? That whenever you are creating the BD, because see this subnet will belongs uh, will belong to some EPG, right? And this EPG will be a part of some bridge domain. So now using this endpoint, we can find out what is the VXLAN ID of that particular BD. And this BD will be a part of some VRF, right? So we can find out the BD VXLAN ID and VRF v, uh, VXLAN ID using this command show system internal EPM endpoint IP and that, and then the IP address of that endpoint. Also, it is, you can see it is also showing the MAC address belongings to the uh, IP address. So this is also a useful command that we can run now if i go to the spine and if i want to check that i have a uh, endpoint in the database of the spine and i want to check that behind which leaf switch this particular uh, endpoint is residing so i can run this particular command show coop internal info repo ep key then we can mention the bd we need here bd we need or bd vxlan id right i already uh, uh, discuss about the bd we need and vrf we need we can check with the command that we have discussed in our previous slide then i can put the mac address so in that it will show you that which leaf is publishing this particular endpoint you can see here the publisher id 172.298.22 so this is the vtap address of that particular leaf who is owning this endpoint or who is assign uh, advertising or reporting this particular endpoint to the spine you can also find out the same information but using the uh, ip address of uh, the endpoint you can see here that when you are putting the uh, mac address it is uh, uh, you need to put the BD we need. PD you can think of as a broadcast domain. So that is why it is owning the MAC information. So when you are putting the MAC, you need to put the BD we need. But if you are uh, using the 
IP address. So IP address, you can think of VRF. That is why you need to put the VRF in it here. And then you can find out the same information. You can see here the publisher ID. It is the tap address of the leaf who reported this particular endpoint. So these are also some useful commands. If you do have AC in your network, then uh, you can check this information. Now we can see some more information about the endpoints. So the, there are retention times. So for the local endpoints, uh, the retention timer is 900 uh, seconds. So if there is no activity from that particular endpoint, so it will be aged out in 900 uh, second. For the remote endpoint, we have 300 seconds. Also, you can modify them if you want, but uh, I don't see any cases where you will be needing these, but we have the flexibility. And if you do have some kind of re uh, requirement in your network, then you can uh, for sure modify them, uh, modify these uh, timers. So the path is tenant, then uh, you'll go to policies. In the policies, you'll go to protocol, and then we have the endpoint retention. So you can, uh, give any name here and then you can see here we have the local endpoint aging interval and remote endpoint aging interval so you can change it from here so here is a quick recap of the endpoint learning process so first of all let's say we have a switch which receives the packet with a source mac this is the MAC A and source IP B. So leaf switch will learn this MAC A as a local endpoint. Now, if the received packet is an R packet or if it is a routed packet, then leaf will also learn the IP B, right? This, that we also discussed. Then as soon as uh, it learns about this local endpoint, it is going to report this particular endpoint to the spine. And one of the spine when receives this particular packet, then using the coop database, that particular uh, endpoint will be synced with all the spines which are present in our network. But as we discussed that only local endpoints will be reported, not the remote endpoints. So now let's have a quick look. There are different VLANs into ACI. First is the uh, port encapsulation VLAN. So VLAN that will assign to an EPG while mapping it to an interface. So let's say, this is my leaf switch. This is port one by one. And we are connecting a server here, which will be into VLAN, let's say 20. So this port will be a part of some endpoint group, right? Some EPG. So this port encapsulation VLAN is this one. So the actual VLAN that will put onto the wire that is the port encapsulation VLAN. Then we also do have uh, the PI or platform independent VLAN. So these are locally significant VLANs that will be assigned whenever you are uh, creating your bridge domains or your EPG. So they will be automatically created and uh, but they will not be used uh, for the forwarding into the ACI. So you can see here a note that VXLN ID are assigned to your bridge domains, your VRFs and your EPGs by your controller. So these are globally unique. It means that, uh, let's say you have 10 leaves in your network from one to 10. So if I created one BD, let's say BD1 on all these 10 uh, leaves, then the VXLAN ID for that BD1 will be same on all the 10 leaves. Same is the case for the VRF and EPGs. So those VXLAN IDs will be unique throughout your fabric. But these are PI VLANs, they are locally significant and they will not be used for the forwarding process. So they are for the internal uh, use of the leaf switch. You can see here, with this command show VLAN extended, you can see these uh, PI VLANs. You can see here, these are PI VLANs, 40 and 45, okay? So if you want to verify the VRF we need, 
then you can run this particular command so here first of all you can see here we have a bd for example send bd so this is the bd we need okay if you want to check the vrf we need you can run this command show vrf then the vrf name detail extended pipe grab vxlan so this will this is the vrf we need so as i mentioned earlier also and uh, this is important to note that whenever we are creating the bd or the vrf automatically a vxlan id will be created and that will be unique throughout your fabric so that we need to make sure now so this is uh, one of the interesting topic and uh, this is very important so we have a concept of pervasive gateway or any cast gateway so let's say we have a spine switch we have three leaves and we have endpoints so i have let's say one endpoint here which is having ip address 10.1 here we have 10.2 and here we have 10.3 so as in uh, the legacy network also we have uh, the endpoints and they have some uh, they have their default gateways so these are our leaf switch so let's say i create one bd here bd1 and here also i created the bd1 and let's say the third one it's 20.3 here i created bd3 so the default gateway of these endpoints which are in this subnet it is let's say 10.254 and it's a slash 24 network so whenever i create this bridge domain i will create a subnet and that subnet will be the default gateway ip slash 24 similarly i will i will create the subnet for this bd so its gateway is let's say 254 slash 24 okay so whenever i'm creating this bridge domain and this uh, subnet so automatically a slash 32 entry will be injected into the routing table of the fabric or the leaf switch so uh, you can see here i created one subnet with slash 24 so a entry an entry like this 10 11 254 slash 32 it will be injected into the rib of the leaf switch okay so now uh, the use of pervasive gateway is same as in the legacy that it will uh, serve as a default gateway for the endpoints but it will be injected wherever we are creating this bd for example uh, you can see here that we have bd1 on leaf one because uh, we have the endpoint which belongs to this particular subnet if i connect any endpoint here and let's say it is also into the same subnet let's say 10.3 then automatically this particular bd subnet bd1 it will be automatically it will be injected on leaf 3 also so the, the default gateways will be automatically pushed whenever we are uh, having an endpoint in that particular subnet okay so now the first thing which is important to note is that whenever we are creating the subnet into the bridge domain so a slash 32 entry will be pushed into the routing information base table so this is the one exception that we talked about that in the routing information base table there will be only known uh, slash 32 routes so this was one of the exception right that the svi or the subnets that we will create under the bd they will be pushed as slash 32. so now uh, there is one more thing i want to uh, highlight here so we are not uh, talking about the contract but first of all uh, let's assume that by default these endpoints can communicate to each other all these endpoints so we discussed in our previous sections as well that the endpoints which belongs to the same epg they can communicate to each other but the endpoint which belongs to to a different epg they cannot talk to each other so they require a contract so we are assuming that everything is fine 
so now what is uh, uh, the idea behind the pervasive gateways are like let's say if this endpoint wants to communicate to this endpoint which is into another bridge domain so now when traffic will come to this leaf then because leaf one does not know about this particular subnet which is of 20 right why because on leaf one there is no endpoint which belongs to this particular subnet that is why this bridge domain is not automatically injected here right now what will happen that when traffic will hit here first of all as per the forwarding behavior the endpoint table will be checked and if in the endpoint table this particular uh, subnet is not present then a second will be the routing table so in routing table there is a possibility that you have some kind of default route that is coming from your layer 3 out or your external uh, external world right that we discussed before so this particular traffic can directly go to layer 3 out but you can see here that this is not where that particular endpoint uh, is residing right this is residing uh, behind some of your leaf switch but now you are sending the traffic to the layer 3 out this should not be the case that is why there is a concept of pervasive route it means that that uh, when there is a communication between your endpoints who belongs to the endpoint belongs to the epg and your epg belongs to your bridge domains so if the communication is allowed let's say this is epg1 which belongs to bd1 and here we have epg3 which belongs to bd3 so now a pervasive route will be injected into the routing table of leaf one like this 20.1.1.0 slash 24 and its next hope will be the spine proxy tap address okay so now when the traffic will hit to the leaf switch first of all it will check the endpoint table now because this particular entry is not in the endpoint table now the routing table will be checked and in the routing table now because of the pervasive route just remember this point the bd ip slash 32 it will not be injected but the route of that particular bridge domain that will be injected onto the other leaf now you can see here we don't have any endpoint which belongs to this subnet but there is a pervasive route which belongs to that particular bd and the next of that particular uh, route it is this spine proxy type address so now we can send the traffic to spine which already knows about this particular endpoints which is reported by leaf 3 so this is important this is confusing i know but uh, if you will uh, uh, watch this again and again then it will make sense i will also show you some of the uh, commands that will make it more clear now see this so i have created i have a bridge domain and uh, we have created one uh, subnet here this one you can see here 10 232 11.1 slash 24 so i have a subnet i created one subnet 10 232 11.1 slash 24 but if you check here swipe interface brief we are of this grab 33 you can see here this is the pi vlan that we discussed that automatic vlan will be created right so for your bridge domain so this automatic pi vlan or platform independent vlan is created so now uh, the point that i want to uh, show you here is that um, if you check the routing table of this leaf show ip route and if you check this 
and this is the vrf so you can see here that even though you created the slash 30 uh, slash 24 subnet but automatically in the uh, rib a slash 32 entry is injected and you can see here it is a pervasive entry so this is the exception that we talked about also if you see if you go to lift 124 and if you run the same command here also we have the same subnet or the same bd is configured here or injected here but you can see here the pi vlan is different that is why as i mentioned earlier also these pi vlans are locally significant right now if you see here show ip route and then the route you can see here we have a slash 30 two route injected in uh, the rib of leaf 124 also but if you want to explore these pi vlans you can see for leaf 123 the pi vlan was 30 and if you do this command show vlan id 30 extended then you can see that this particular vlan it belongs to this particular bd bd sen but the important thing is you can just see it the VXLAN ID, it's same on both LEAF 123 and LEAF 124. For LEAF 124, the PI VLAN was 33. For 123, it was 30. But the VXLAN ID is same on both, which is unique, as I mentioned earlier also. So these PI VLANs are locally significant, but the VXLAN ID that is created against your BD Whenever you create this VD, this VXLAN ID will be automatically generated by your fabric. So this will be same or unique throughout your fabric. Now let's quickly move to the next slide, which is also for the pervasive gateway. So I just want to show you about the pervasive route. So if I do a show IP route, then you can see here we have the pervasive gateway which is the slash uh, 32, which is injected into the rib, right? And here also we have again a PI VLAN. So show VLAN ID extended. And then we have the BD and the VXLAN ID against that particular bridge domain. Now let's also have a look on the pervasive route. So now you can see here on the same device, along with this uh, this particular slash 32 route another entry is created which is slash 24 into the rib this is known as the pervasive route so the actual subnet entry will also be uh, created into the routing table so there are two entries that will be created whenever you are creating a subnet under the bd so first entry will be slash 32 and the second will be the actual subnet entry that belongs to that the subnet that you have created. But the main point here is that the next hop IP, you can see the next hop here is 172.29.8.64 slash 32. Now, if you want to check that, what is this particular IP or what is this uh, tap address? So on the leaf, you can run this command show ISIS dynamic taps VRF overlay, which is the internal VRF that is used between your uh, fabric devices, pipe grab spine. Now check this entry. So this is the physical proxy Anycast V4. So there are three uh, Anycast tap entries, which belongs to your spine switch. So first one is the Anycast MAC, which is for the, your L2 unknown Unicast traffic. So let's say you have uh, received some traffic, which is uh, switched traffic or your layer two traffic and you uh, or your leaf switch does not know about the destination MAC. Then in that case, this particular tap address will be used, which is unique between your spine switches. So that is called the uh, proxy Anycast MAC address. Then second one is the proxy Anycast V4 address, which will be used for your IP V4 traffic and your ARP request. When your ARP flooding option is off, we'll discuss about this. Uh, what is this ARP flooding option? And the third one is the 
uh, proxy any cast for v6 if you have a ipv6 traffic then this particular entry will be used so this was about the pervasive route and pervasive gateway now let's have a quick look about the vxlan headers and all so as uh, we know that in our uh, within our fabric there is no uh, layer 2 right the domain within the fabric it is layer 3 we are running isis and everything between your leaf and spine switches so let's say you have a endpoint connected on one of your leaf endpoint a and endpoint b is connected to another leaf and they want to have a layer two communication. So it is not possible without some uh, tunneling uh, process, right? Because between your fabric, we have layer three. So now when uh, your leaf is sending the traffic to your spine switch or within the fabric, so it needs to uh, encapsulate that particular traffic. So now let's uh, quickly understand how exactly it works. So let's say this is your real traffic, okay? That it received from your uh, server which is connected and now it needs to put that particular traffic to the fabric or it needs to send this particular traffic to the spine switch so the apps there will be a new fcs that will be uh, calculated and then this original packet there will be a new header that will be added that is the vxlan header there will be a udp header then we have the outer ip header and outer ethernet header our main uh, focus is on the VXLAN header. In the VXLAN header, there will be information of VXLAN ID. And it can be the BD VXLAN ID or the BD VNED, or it can be the VRF VNED. So it depends. So if the traffic or the endpoints wants to communicate in the same subnet, so it means the BD VNED will be put into this field. If it is a layer three traffic or if it is a routed traffic, then VRF we need will be put into this field. And also there will be information related to the endpoint group, right? So let's say this was my leaf switch and this is a server S. It belongs to some EPG on here. So this EPG information will be also uh, set in this particular field so that once the destination leaves which receive this particular packet, it can uh, get to know about the endpoint group to which this particular uh, traffic is destined to so that the same uh, policies can be applied to that particular uh, traffic. Okay. So now, <clears throat> let's see. So, this was about the VXLAN header. So this is the uh, important point which I mentioned here. Now I uh, will not go into the detail of UDP header. So the next one uh, that is important is the outer IP header. So in that we do have two fields. We have the inner source IP address and the outer destination tap address. So the inner source IP address will be the tap address of the leaf. Okay, who is uh, encapsulating this whole traffic. So this will be the source tap address of that, that particular leaf. Let's say it is 10.1.100. Here there we will put the destination tap address. So if let's say the leaf uh, switch knows about the destination behind which that particular destination endpoint belongs, so it can directly put the tap address of that. Let's say it is 10.1. I'm taking any random number, 101. Also here in the destination tap address, if the destination is unknown, so based upon if it is a layer two traffic, there can be the any cast, any cast MAC proxy tap address of the spine. If it is a layer three traffic or if it is an ARP traffic, then we can use the any cast tap address of the spine for IPv4 traffic. So based upon uh, the traffic, the, this particular field will be populated. And once all this is done, then your traffic can travel within your fabric. So once this particular traffic reaches to the uh, destination leaf, it will be decapsulated. 
all this uh, fabric related uh, information will be removed and this original packet will be delivered to the endpoint because our endpoint does not know about VXLAN and everything, right? That particular stuff is garbage for the endpoint. So all this information will be decapsulated and based upon the information, uh, the action will be taken and the original packet will be delivered. So this is how VXLAN comes into picture within our fabric. Now we have a small point that I mentioned here. There is an option in the BD. So there is a possibility, let's say I have a leaf switch and I have a BD subnet here. Let's say it belongs to 10.1.254 slash 24. There is a possibility that uh, by some misconfiguration or uh, by some mistake, someone connected a, let's say, someone connected a server here, which belongs to some EPG let's say EPG1, and this EPG belongs to this particular PD. And by uh, by mistake, we, someone put the server, but the IP of the server is, let's say, in different subnet. So this is not belonging to this particular BD. So in that case, there is a checkbox here within the BD configuration, limit IP learning to subnet. What it will do is that ACI is not going to learn the IP address of that particular uh, endpoint which is connected by mistake. So this was a small point that I want to mention. So now uh, as we are familiar with the, all this basic stuff, so now in our next section we will uh, start our different cases and we'll see step-by-step step how actually the traffic flows within our fabric. So see you in the next section.